I am unashamed. What about you? I go out to the plantation yesterday because Missy had the yard man like move around some of the flower beds that had grown up, you know, well, to, to a treasure hunter in a metal detector. That's called new ground. Yeah, dirt disturbance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I was on the case. You know, you the posse and, uh, riding in because we got we got disturbed dirt. <laughs> yeah. Well, the guy that works the Jay, your, that's what you are. You are you are a, a disturber of, of dirt. Yeah, <laughs> a dirt disturber. Yeah. Look, in the coronavirus <laughs> epidemic, it's the perfect thing to get into. You're by yourself. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's a good quarantine. No, it's of what people do when they become independently wealthy, like you have, Jace. <laughs> you run out of time, and you're like, I think I'll just go play in the dirt, disturb the dirt today. <laughs> okay. As hard as I've worked in the last week, and I take a couple hours, and I'm getting think about it, Al, trash talk Your for brother it. is a dirt disturber, and, he, and, he, and he's watching the stock market every day. That's that right. tells you about that. We've he's, come a long way. You know, I wish you would quit saying that, because I get all this hate mail on the... Uh, <laughs> Email. Oh, <laughs> hey, tell me about it. <laughs> so look, I may finish my story. So I'm out there with the new ground. Look, as soon as I got into the new ground, yeah. found a penny, which it was 1959. So eh. I went 10 more feet. Bam. I found another one. 1920. Now we're getting into the range I like. And I found some other interesting things. Well, the, there's a couple, older couple that works for us. And they're the caretaker of the out there at the place well is she scared scared the daylights out of me because other than my wife i haven't had human contact but i got those earphones on well she snuck up behind me because she was probably saying my name but i had the phones on that's all i'm hearing and she like tapped me on the shoulder you know i thought it was cotton mouth bit me in the back you know because i was under a tree (laughs) i was like oh (laughs) and i turned around i was like oh and so she said there's a package that came for you out here. She handed it to me. But it when I picked it up, it was it was heavy. Well, her husband, who works for me, he talks like this, you know. He said, well, what is it? It's heavy. I said, well, let me open this thing up. Where, are they local, that couple? Yeah. Or where are they? They're from yeah, here. They're, okay. they're awesome. She's a great cook and just a great. She makes a pers- uh she makes a place just a home. She's good at it. And he can talk to a telephone pole. Yeah. So they're the perfect caretakers. For a, for a B&B, that's what you yeah, I, yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. So I opened it up. They were exciting. You know, they, there's, you know, because it, it's hurt our business because everybody had to postpone or cancel. You know, I'm the first person that's been out there in a month. So, you know, they're following me around. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, it's a human being. Sounds so like look, my world. I yeah. opened this package up, and I said, well, this Whoa. can't be right. Look at this. This, now I don't know if y'all want to get a tight shot of this at some point. But look, it's 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 an, here's what it is, because I had to figure it out. These are replica championship rings for the LSU football team. Because it's got 15 and 0, I saw. It's got 15 and 0. You need a magnifying glass to read all this. Is that even legal? (laughs) Is it legal? What do you mean? To make one? Make replicas of the real thing. Well, I think these are the people who make the rings. We think they're the people that make them for them. Because he put on the side Robertson, number one fan. And look, he gave me eight of them. Now, these are replicas, but they look real, don't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, look at this thing. And so you say, well, what do you, who is it? The guy never even said his name. He sent, there was a little card, a business card. Because all I saw was a champ ring guy, which is his, you know, website and business, I guess. He makes championship rings for teams in out of Missouri. And, uh, but look, he never gave his name. It, he just said, hey, I thought y'all would get a kick out of this for the real ones, you know, are are, is, are given to the team. You know, carry on and God bless. So it was sent to and you? He, yes, and he just signed it with a smiley face. <laughs> so look. Oh, I didn't I didn't realize there's something inside of it. Our oh, time. Our time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, wow. that's on the inside of it. It says yeah. our time. 
So look, so but now that'd be quite the chore just wearing that if you if it well, was I don't for wearing. Know, you know, I'm hoping. What if we have five of them? We just go all bling. It made me think of the. Uh, so I want to thank this mysterious guy. Yeah, me too. And uh, hopefully, if they don't edit this out, you you'll get some business from it because this is awesome. That's right. I will uh, now. I got everybody's Christmas present. You know, Yeti sent me some LSU cups when they won, and that was what I was going to give. But now I've got birthdays. And Christmas, because he sent them to me, so I'm the distributor. You know what? See, it that's me- how Jace is independently wealthy. All of his presents to his brothers and family are things sent to him by other people. That's well, pretty have, good. That's well, pretty you'll good have gig. to admit about halfway cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, somebody dis- <laughs> gave it to me. I get. I'll give it to them. I mean, I'll gladly take it. I'm not going to keep this up. I'm not going to give you and Kay your ring because I was going to give Miss Kay one. Oh, Mom needs to get one for sure. Well, she oh, yeah, called she'll me. be happy. She's a big LSU fan. And oh, by the way, Jace, it, 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 I know there's a pandemic going on. We're missing our sports. They're showing these old ball games. Even Trump mentioned the other day, who wants to watch an eight-year-old ball game? But LSU is still the national champion. I, we don't talk about that enough, that we need to yeah. remind people. That goes all year till we start over again next well, year. Well, I have to tell you this. I've watched the LSU championship game. How many times? Double digits. <laughs> <laughs> you probably could analyze the whole thing. Here's what's funny. Missy come in there one night. She's like, "What? Why are you hollering?" I'm like, "I'm watching the LSU game." She's Again. like, "He's still yelling like it, like it's happening." She in said rips. that happened three months ago. I said, "And it was still a terrible call." <laughs> <laughs> so, some a bizarre world. I will. I will have to admit <laughs> that's a good that, idea. The, the Tigers in 2000 and. What would it be called? The nineteen. It'd be the nineteen season. Yeah. The t- the two thousand nineteen. <laughs> I will have to admit that the Tigers did literally strap the whole bunch. There yeah. was No. Well, Missy, them. she had a magnifying glass looking at them because because I told her I was like, look, we got a package out here and it's good. And she and, said, what is? What it? are the chances of? And the way they did it, they were led by a Cajun. I yeah. mean, can you imagine oh, that right. kind of stuff Perfect. going? A was, Cajun you know says, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, we're going to get it. Oh, hey, yeah, look. Hey, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Tigers. Go yeah. Tigers. Look, who, 99% – I practiced on that. 99% of the media, when he was hired, oh, dumpster fire. Bad oh, hire. Horrible. Oh, yeah. What are they doing? That's all of it. They got, And it's the same thing people do about people in Louisiana. They – it's facial profiling. It's stereotyping. It's they think you have to be. You know what I thought of when I got these rings is that silly insurance commercial that uh, Nick Saban is yeah, on. Like he has like, you know, because you can't. And I know we got a lot of people from listening from Alabama, but look, our problem with Nick Saban is that he was at LSU, and so we feel there's, you know, it got personal there. You <laughs> so, know what I mean? So and he yeah. turned our program around. So so he did. Yeah. Look, I mean, I'm I'm glad when he was there, but once he left, hey, you're Tiger Bait. You're yeah. Tiger Bait. Tiger Bait. So we're done with that. So I'm like, don't wear your rings on this little insurance. Come on. I can't even watch that. I, every time it comes on, I because he has all his rings on, and he's like, oh, I've done pretty well. <laughs> Louisiana is the place where you can uh, have a have a college degree or a couple of them, but, but in America, even though you have a couple of degrees, which means you're not an idiot, but still, if you're from Louisiana, it it you seem like you do not have the degrees. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Oh yeah, you you have the something well, Phil, about the way you put things. I looked that up in the dictionary and it had your face there. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You're the poster child. You're the poster child of what a two degree My person. My line on it is: I'd rather be a lot smarter than they think I am. So I'd rather act dumb and be smart than think I'm smart and actually. Well, I you am told dumb us that. What was up. the guy? What was the saying you always used to say about it's better to be quiet and uh, assume? No, there's a problem. People, no, a, no, oh. assume. Uh, you know anything? Then open your mouth and remove all doubt. Yeah, what what yeah. was that? I don't know, but I've heard it before. You know. Well, Phil, you said it for ten years. <laughs> yeah, I got off of that. <laughs> uh, so, I'm not half a bubble off, but I'm happy to be on so, planet Earth. So the moral of the story is: if you're looking for something to do, 
you can go back to your championship moments yeah. and pass great. the time. And uh, and I just wanted to say, whoever sent me these rings, look, normally when someone sends me something cool, which – If that's a replica, are they are the real rings, are they that heavy? Oh, yeah. Well, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, say I this. So. Un- unless maybe is gold lighter. I mean, how could you how could you wear that as heavy as that? Well, is? you don't really. You, you kind of just put that on a shelf you, somewhere. You, you put it. Yeah, I mean, that's well, what I noticed. I'm Saban do. did a deal. You know, on that the, was the commercial. On the ad, and he had his hand there, <laughs> well, and he had about five rings that on it. Yeah, that's Hollywood. <laughs> it looked pretty bulky. <laughs> that was Hollywood. <laughs> that was probably fake. He said, "Well, we try." <laughs> You believe the story. Yeah. See, so he, he doesn't it. walk around. That's buying the insurance now. Well, I'm telling you, that's disturbing. So, look, what what was interesting, though, is the guy sent me this. And, you know, every once in a while, I mean, someone sent me this Bible. So I'm going to put the rings right under the Bible. That's but right. It's close. And it was awesome. So usually I'll send a duck call and a book, which I will, old chimp ring guy, he'll be getting – uh, an assortment of duck calls. Exactly. He's earned Because I don't know what these cost, but they don't look cheap. I mean, even the replica version, that's not cheap. That was made, just the craftsmanship alone. It's amazing. Is amazing. And it's way heavier than it looks. I mean, this thing weighs, what, oh. three pounds? Well, I mean, it's yeah. heavy. Yeah. I'm excited about Christmas. So, yeah. so, we're, so we're going on record here. So Al gets bills in the mail. That's what I get in the mail, bills. Well, because you know, pay you, here, pay that, pay your thing. Because of your condition. I get nothing good. That, so, I, that I helped you with on our earlier podcast. <laughs> Jace, you, Jace gets cool <laughs> rings with monogram names on them, which thank, thankfully he did enough for the rest of the robbers. So what do you get in the mail, Dad? Do you get stuff in well, the mail? Well, I, I, I received this last night. Well, you got to um, get in front of the mic, I Phil. You're this, past the mic. There I you received go. this last night. Here's and your uh, I read it in about an hour. It's from an MD, a doctor. Your mama wasn't a monkey. <laughs> oh, Dr. Tex. So did the title draw you into the book? Dr. Is... Tex, I'd never heard of you before. Phil, that's the difference between me and you. Look, if I got that book and read the cover for just from a random person, uh-huh. I wouldn't read it. That's, that's why I, I receive hundreds of books. People, really? People send me hundreds almost every day. And some of them I read, some of them I don't. But but I at least they're sending me rings, and they send you books. I, I at least they look send in me there, bills. and I said, "Well, I said this guy is on to something. Your mama wasn't a monkey because <laughs> I'm thinking what he said. I read in the book, but what I've been saying for years, and how we we all have well, said. Give it. us the point. I mean, what was? Well, he started with basically uh, had some serious problems with. Don't the, don't ruin the book. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't give us don't, the don't ruin but the, the book. The bottom line <laughs> is, I mean, you could just boil it down to common. He's long on. Common Common sense and short, very short on bull crap. <laughs> so I read it. I said, you know, that's, that's a good something. Endorser. <laughs> By the way, give his address there. Well, I mean, All right. I so this it. is uh, Tex Cyrus is his name. Dr. Tex. And if you guys want to email him. Phil, uh, this is turned into a, a it book is. endorsement. It is. It's, great. Now, it's a great little book. These so here, people are thinking that we planned all this. No, we didn't plan it. It just happened. It didn't happen. So Tex Cyrus 7. I at, never heard of him until <laughs> last night. Tex Cyrus 7 at gmail.com. So if you guys are interested in uh, reading your monkey, your monkey, Common your sense. mama ain't a monkey. So. <laughs> your mama's not a monkey because he was just saying, look, <laughs> look, if we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys running around? That's a good point. And I mean, I'm like, a, you know, he's got a point there. I'm not sure all, right. all those words fit together. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take a break and, and, and dive in today. So uh, we get a lot of different products here, and I've always loved these guys at Duke Cannon. So they call this, if you can see it, it says the Moderate Self-Improvement Box, your one-step program to achieve a slightly better version of yourself. I love it. The guys that do count, they're not saying, you know, we're not taking you zero to 100. If we could just get mm. you slightly better. I which, wonder if they looked at people like me and Phil and said, you know, just do something. <laughs> It's just right. anything. <laughs> we don't want to offend them, but we just want to inspire them to just be a little just better. Just a little just better. Do, little do better. something. So yeah, do it, something. so it, it, so you get a lot of different products in the box. I mean, here's deodorant, something that uh, you well, might yeah. be aware of, which is a good thing. <laughs> uh, yes, it's know, been a while since it's I've been It's a big old brick of soap. You know, soap is always important. There's some body powder. 
Uh, oh, yeah. you know, which is really nice. So this one of the is, things this is a personal hygiene box, exactly, because mm. they just want you a slightly better version of yourself. I could do that. So one of the things that they're talking about in specific is a is a process called thick. Now, so we we talk about thick hair, um, being able to you know have this body wash, better hair, better body. It's about thick. So that's the name. The of, that's what they're is calling. If it. Phil does all this, the, the consequences would be extreme. <laughs> What would happen? No, I'm just telling y'all right now. <laughs> you're, you I'm, be- I'm 74 here in about a week, and I'm looking at you two guys. Y'all are my sons, but I've just noticed y- your bodies are beginning to downgrade like mine. <laughs> and for from some strange reason, I feel better about it. <laughs> when I see you with whiskers, Al, gray whiskers, and you, Jace, I'm like, you know what that okay, tells me? we're you know, all playing out. You know what that tells me? Your eyes are going bad. <laughs> You need a box of this right here. That's right, Duke Cannon. Duke and Cannon. specifically, we're talking about the thick body wash today. So anyway, here's what you do if you want to check this out, because they got some really cool products. So you can visit DukeCannon.com, Duke Cannon, all one name, dot com. If you use the promo code Phil, you're going to get 15% off your first order, and you're going to get free shipping Uh you know, in basic with an order over $35. So that's a really good deal. Check it out. Uh, they got some really cool stuff. You even get a little certificate there of completion uh, from the whole box club. And then, you know, check out what they got. Speaking of that, somebody sent me a, uh, I try to stay out of politics. I know I don't want to bring up a political subject, but somebody sent me a, uh, I think it was a, it was Joe Biden, uh, he was doing an interview or something, and it was the most bizarre phraseology. Incoherent rant. Yeah, and I was All like. All of his are that way. These somebody days. said, check this out. I'm like, what? What is this the best we got? I, was I sad. mean. And Bernie dropped out uh, this week. Yeah. And so it's here's why I feel. It's funny. Republicans, most of them you see, they feel sad about it. What's the way I feel? I'm like, someone in his family needs to stop this. But now it's like it's. Taken off the trains. Well, I, out thought, of the, I thought it was. I edited. actually think they're going with I it. I think they are, and I'm yeah, just. I but so Republicans seem to be sad about it, and I guess the, the Democrats that are pushing this up don't even care about this poor man. He he can't hardly even put two sentences together. You it's know what really I sad. think it is? It's these people they miss the forest for the trees. I think they look like try to get the same age in these political because they're like Trump. What is he like? Seventy. He's 70, seventy. He's my age. Four thirty. Yeah, he's seventy-four. 74. So they're like, so there's only four years older. difference, but that's what By I'm saying. Way, speaking like, of birthdays, <laughs> what day is it today? April the what? Because uh, I've lost all track of time. Well, you know, we're in the corona thing. The quarantine anyway. is knocked out the day. It is April 9th when we're April rec- 9th, recording this. On the yeah. 24th of April, I will be 74 <laughs> years old. Well, happy birthday, in case huh? I forget. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to get. I have an no LSU eggs. Ring. No, Kay's getting the no, ring. Getting I'll, I'll, I'll I get have you no uh, eggs. Because I'll, Dad would try to wear it. I was going to do some a little bit of uh, lancing, doing a little doctoring on your mother's leg last night. <laughs> oh, boy. I just spotted it. That leg was up on the couch, and I said, wait a minute here. I walked over. I said, I said, what, what happened there? What what, what what'd you do? And she said, I don't know. I just So it looked like it was a deep bruise. With a volcano fixing to explode on the top of it, I'm like on her leg. On her leg. This was eight o'clock yesterday evening. Volcanoes and, said, and legs. That's not good. I said, Miss Kay, you need to have something done about that right now, uh, I'm or, or, or I'm going to do it, or I'm going to do it. And she said, What are you doing about? It? I said, I'm going to lance that, and I recommend soaking your leg in some Epsom salt. That's what Ma would have said. My mama back there 50 years ago. I said, yeah. that's what we do with this. Mm. So I, I reached over and started to get my needles ready and everything. Oh, boy. And they said, wait a minute here. So Who Ms. said Ms. wait K a minute? Calls There's nobody nurse. else down there. Mom, well, Mom said wait a minute. Oh. Miss K <laughs> calls up saying, her, her nurse friend. The nurse friends had sent me a picture of it. Said, Phil said what? Said, he said, I need to do something about this, or he's fixing to do something about it. He's got his tools coming out of it. <laughs> she said, tell him to keep his knife in his pocket. Well, let me look at it first. Okay. So Thank- she looks thankfully. at it. The nurse looks at it and says, come up here. And my sister, who's a doctor, would be waiting on you, gave her the address. I said, good to go. So they go up there, and the doctor said, what did he tell you? And Miss Kay said, well, he said it needed to be Lance, and he was going to do it. She said, He's exactly right, but he didn't need to do it. Tell him to 
calm down. Because you've got to give him a few hundred dollars. Well, no. So my diagnosis (laughs) of the situation, me not a playing doctor, but I just said, that needs to be taken well, care plus, of. Plus, is that now. something to do with sterile equipment? You just don't start taking stuff. She said, the doctor said, you wouldn't have wanted to wait till morning. To have yeah, but you were right there. So well, It's a good thing you noticed it. So your mama came back, and you know now I'm kind of looking after her leg. So you know, old age is creeping oh, in, is what like, I'm trying to tell you. <clears throat> yeah, she yeah. looked like the mummy this morning. Right well, there. Was, but this is, this is from a guy, Jay-Z, calls Jay Stone. When he had his thing, remember his whatever it was that bit him or whatever happened, his little core thing he had. Yeah. And he calls Stone and says, Stone, you got a sharp knife? Are you coming out today? You got a sharp knife? Stone said, well, I'm coming out. Yeah, I got a sharp knife. Why? What do you need? And he's like, well, I got this thing on my leg, and I'm going to get you to cut it out of there. And Stone's like, nope. <laughs> he backed out on it. <laughs> He got a hold of a nurse practitioner. <laughs> because the nurse you want practitioner said, send stuff. me a picture. They look at my leg. He said, I can get it. So he took out a plug about a, almost a half inch around. What, what was it? Uh, uh, he called it a sebaceous cyst. It was just a ball that kept getting bigger. And I said, I'm tired of food with this thing. I don't know. It kind of began to bother me a little bit. But he just took a plug out, what's sewed a, it up. What's amazing to six, me. Six or eight <clears throat> stitches, no problem. What's amazing to me is as many times as you or Miss Kay call me, y'all never bring this stuff up. It's y'all. Y'all talking about something else? I didn't even know all this was going on. Well, just small injuries during the pandemic. I don't want to spook anybody. <laughs> well, you know so, I mean, Dad missed yeah. the point. In the case she has a mask on when she goes up there, and the doctor has a mask on, and you know where. So that's why she said, oh, "Tell him to calm down." Well, I diagnosed the situation correctly, by the way. But what if you had been wrong? <laughs> hey, I knew I wasn't wrong. <laughs> I look at somebody's leg and I spot something like that. I'm like, I'm not a doctor, but common sense tells me that needs to be dealt All with. All I wanted you to say is I'm not a I'm doctor. Not a doctor. Oh, I'm, I'm going to consider that a win. We better but I did speak. I've of- done a lot of cutting on myself and a lot of thorn removing, like hundreds of, of, of these old – Thorns, you know, the thorn trees down there in Louisiana, you know, I mean, briar I've done a thickets. lot of cutting on myself. I've that's, done a lot of cutting. You know, there's actually a serious I, That's what I was thinking where about. Where people it. cut themselves. But they do it kind of for, like, mental yeah. problems or whatever. I only cut well, something. If it's like a thorn, I can't get to it. I have to dig it out and all this stuff, you know, or just. You had a purpose in cutting yours out. Sure. So, speaking of doctors, Jason, you'll love this. I heard this coming out here today. That I guess now Dr. Fauci, he's the most famous doctor in the world because every day he's on TV, he and the woman with uh, with Trump. You always and, say, talking about some, somebody's the most famous person in the world, and I've never heard of it. Yeah, well, most people that are watching stuff would know this, but. What's he on to explain? Because there may be. 10, no, I tr- trust me. Trust me. Like our me. audience knows who Dr. Fauci is. I Jason, don't watch the Jason, news. Jason, six people don't know Dr. Fauci. I don't watch the news. Dr. Fauci is one of the Corona Task Force doctors. He's a little short guy. I guess he's from New York. Okay. <laughs> I, I've seen him. Okay. He's from New York. Dad, New Yorker. Yeah. So, and he's just kind of flamboyant. You know, he's really, and so like people have flocked to him. And of course, you know, half the country hates Trump. So they don't even want him to talk. Everybody loves Fauci. But Fauci said today, which I, I wanted to mention this, Jace would love it. He says when the coronavirus is, is done, when the virus has been killed, we don't have to worry about it anymore. America should never start shaking hands again. He's like, thank you. He's like, that needs to stop. Going I like, I like Jesus <laughs> wheelhouse. Well, I know. That's but why look, I wanted to bring it up. I, you know how many apologies I've had? Zero. <laughs> and y'all were two of the worst ones, saying, "Oh, you're a germaphobe." You know, you don't. Well, you are my, a germaphobe. My wife was no, I'm not a germaphobe. I said, "Quit shaking hands," <laughs> because I I've said this 100 times. Every time I would do an event, you have a VIP meet and greet. Yep. You shake people's hands, you hug their neck, which is fine. I love because we're people. getting paid to do it, and we, you and, know, and I love people. And people are great, but, but I don't. I mean, I'd rather hug them from the side than shake their hand. But it, but I would do it, and so the next morning I would wake up after these two to five hundred people, and my throat sore, and I thought there's a connection going on. Every time I shake that many hands. The next morning, I have some kind of cold. So I didn't. I wasn't a germaphobe. I just looked at it and said, I need to quit shaking people's hands. So anybody I knew, I figured they were big, you know, big boys. They can take it. 
So when they stuck their hand out, I'd say, like, if I know them, if I'm buddies, I was like, I don't shake hands anymore. Let's do something else. But now it's been so, sanctioned for that to happen. Like You have but, the option of. But every time I would say that, people would get offended or they make fun of me because my friends are like, well, we're friends. I'm like, yeah, but What I don't he's trying to, to say, Al, is that the text that the Apostle Paul wrote, speaking on behalf of God, greet each other with a holy kiss. Now, that is out in Jason's <laughs> mode of operandi. I have used that many times. I've shared a couple times in here as an illustration for these People that we say, uh, what are they, hardliners, I guess, who are legalistic with scriptures, I'll bring that verse up to prove a point. But would that, you But would you agree? It, I mean, if we were just saying that's what it says, then we should start kissing people again. I know that this. Was, that's my point. I know when people this. say, you're not doing what this says. You're not doing what this says. So I'm like, well, next time I see your wife, I'm going to kiss her. <laughs> well, I like this. In a holy I, manner. I, I can't get off that Psalm 91. <laughs> Uh, the pestilence will not come near you that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, Jace, ten thousand at your right hand. They're dying all around you, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. That's Psalm 91. I keep going back to that. It comforts me to say that God says, I'll protect you. Just trust me. Oh, right. Well, ultimately, so, <clears throat> ultimately, that's where we land. Well, no, I, I don't have a problem with – I'm a social butterfly. But I don't want to test but, God by saying I'm going to run up there and jump in the middle of a big crowd just to show you that he's on my side. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm going to I'm going to hunker down. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's not – you don't have to have meetings, have to have them. Jesus said, where two or three of you gather together, two or three of you, in my name, I'll be there. Well, if you look at that, you say, you know, and in lieu of Romans chapter 12, look, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual act of worship, how you operate at work, at play, in the gym, on your job, out talking to people, what we're doing now. You say, so biblically speaking, what we three right here today are doing we're in the process of worshiping God as we do every day. Well, let me hang read on, the American up. model is go to a <laughs> church building, worship, and leave. The biblical model is worship God all the time in spirit, in truth. There's not a place. Now we're now we're to John, John four hour where you were heading. Well, hang on, along. hang on. Let's take a break, and then Jay says a word. So uh, we understand about running a business, Dad. You started out with a small business that got a lot bigger. Uh, yep. Jason and I have some small businesses that we run, this kind of cottage businesses, I guess you call it. We never got super big that we had a lot of HR issues. Um, Dad, you know what an HR is for no. your business? Yep, I didn't think so. Head, not head, home head, run. Head ringer, head ringer. Human resources, not head, home run. Head ringer. <laughs> head <laughs> ringer. <laughs> or a home run. Actually, it, it, uh, it's human resources for those yeah. of you in the business world. Uh, but look, so you got to have HR guys now. I mean, there's so many lawsuits and crazy things going on. Basically, cost you seventy grand a year if you were going to hire somebody to do it. So a company has come along, and basically they're going to provide your HR for you without having to hire somebody, which is pretty good. So you get an online HR situation. The name of the company is Bam B B A M B E E. And so basically they're going to provide that for you. You can go phone, email, real time chat. Uh, a lot of different ways to connect to them, month to month, no hidden fees. You cancel anytime, so you save yourself a lot of money for your business. You can get a free audit if you go to bambe b a m b e e dot com slash robertson. So you go there right now, you get a free audit. That's bambe dot com slash robertson b a m b e dot com slash robertson. Check them out. Colossians 1.15, one of my favorites. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. We all agree with that, resurrection. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth. Well, here's the phrase I wanted to get at, <coughs> visible and invisible. So, you know, I've heard Trump, they they been calling the coronavirus the invisible, invisible enemy 
enemy. So germs, atoms, molecules, you know, he eventually says he is before all things and in him all things hold together. What what things? <laughs> atoms, molecules. The atomic structure of everything. Yes. So having said all that, am I going to fret about shaking someone's hand and getting a disease? No, I'm, I'm not going to fret about it because I'm – under the protection of the one who has made all things, whether it's visible, invisible, invisible enemies. Mm. So, but you know, the, the scary truth about the earth and life is that we all die. All the main characters in the new Testament, guess what? They died horrific deaths. That is correct. In the name of Jesus. That is correct. So I took that to mean, you said, well, they died. As far as men are concerned, they said right. they died. Right. But God said, no, they just departed. But so that, that tell me something. <laughs> Look, well, that's not a problem. God doesn't view that. You dying in a horrific way because of your that's faith correct. in him. He does not view that as a problem. Correct. Now, to Dad's point, because it was interesting, when we made a decision, I mean, like when we were asked not not to meet in Groups larger than yep. it started out two fifty, and then it was fifty, and then it was the ten. The governing authorities has <clears throat> issued an edict. So a lot of people, I think, took it the wrong way because it was very obvious to most of us that this wasn't a this wasn't an attempt to take away your religious freedom. To to I mean, it was in the context of why we were asked. It made sense. I mean, it made sense to me. But we had well, you have to make <laughs> it work in your mind, though. I mean, look, I was at an event. Right there, it was a uh, it was a Christian school, and I was in Michigan. Yeah, remember look, you told us. I was actually that, yeah. in Detroit, Michigan, which turned out to be one of the hubs it's of the hotspot, coronavirus. Yeah. And exactly. you're fixing to uh, speak. Yeah, and I'm fixing and to shake speak. a bunch of hands. Well, the guy, the uh, what did they call him at these schools, the headmaster or whatever? He's like, we don't care what the governor said. Yeah, you know, we're we're meeting. Yeah, but I was the one that said, well, wait a minute here. You know, because I felt like we're going down a road now where I'm not sure I want to go. Because I had to, in my mind, process it. I'm like, well, why are they doing this? And so basically, I was telling them, I'll come back, but we need to protect the vulnerable. Yes, all of us are in good shape. We're not in the prime. Because at that point, we even knew yeah. that the ones that are suffering are really the older ones or underlying health conditions. So let's... This is no longer about us. Okay, we may get the flu. You know, because a lot of my buddies are like, well, the whole world's going crazy because of the flu. You know, but when you look at it, you don't want to be the one responsible for taking the last couple of years, maybe, a, you know, of an older person. So let's let's pull back, take a deep breath. But in your mind, you got to figure out, well, what am I going with? I think that's yeah. people had a – there was a process that had to happen because you're like, well, how do I feel about this? You know, well, so and then you, had you a, were you were being wise. By the way, there are a lot of uh, laws that various countries have. Uh, start with uh, the Chinese Communist Party. It is against their law for us to do. We three right now do what we doing right now. <clears throat> right. They would not allow it. You say, well, there there goes Christianity. Hard, hardly. Look, there are Christian people all over Red China. Oh, and I know. In say, secret, but in still. In secret. You yeah. say, well, where are they meeting? They're doing what Romans 12 says. They're whispering, whispering the Bible text, and they're in little groups all over China. And But the Chinese communists, how are you going to find them and root them out? They don't have a structure with a steeple on it against the law. Mm -hmm. They cannot meet. <clears throat> so what they're doing is— they're fulfilling what Romans 12 said. You can't well, stamp out the kingdom it, of God by some government edict. People no, need to realize what's that. What's interesting, you're bringing up Romans 12, but then Romans 13, he actually says, Submit to the authority. Yeah, God put the authorities in place. Now, that is correct. And the point is, humans, some humans, it's being wise, have abused that, that government process where they're, you know, now controlling the people in abusive ways. And then as a result, you. Lose your freedom. Well, a classic example <clears throat> is in our state, Louisiana, John Bell Edwards, who's a Democrat and who I know. I mean, I wouldn't call us friends, but we know each other. And I've had dinner with he and his wife, Lisa and I have. And he's pro-life, pro-gun. He's got a lot of good things going for him. But he, whenever he made the, the mandate in Louisiana about not meeting, he 
provided an exemption for churches, still wanted it 10 or under, but an exemption to do church work. In other words, do your live streams, you know, have a few small people get together. So what I'm saying is he he knew the value. He called churches well, an essential and, business. And he even though you're we tend to look at Democrats and Republicans and like you know, put them in boxes, but you you can't be a liberal like left wing. Right. You know, Louisiana is a conservative state. Yeah, you so never get elected. He, he, well, right, he kind of gets it. Okay, I'm a Democrat. There's things you know we obviously don't agree with. Yeah, he's some not of his a platform. far left well, Democrat. He and he never told, people wouldn't vote for him. He's a blue dog yeah, Democrat. Yeah. In fact, Dad told Y'all him. Y'all got all these labels. I'm I'm just clarifying that it's what did not I tell a him typical. Out? You told him that you said, "Why are you a Democrat?" <laughs> so we had breakfast with him. No, way to way to just get to the point. <laughs> Dad said, "Why are you a Democrat?" I mean, I, I see what the stuff you talk about. You seem more like a Republican. Why wouldn't you just leave them and come over to our side? And I don't know if you remember what he told you. He said, Phil, I'd like to he know. said, my party has gotten so far out there. It's how I grew up and union, a lot of different reasons why he's a Democrat. But he said, I want to try to pull him back. And I don't think I can do that if I just bail out on it. <laughs> what a yeah. slick answer. Yeah. So, you know. But Phil, what's the deal? You're never going to. You're never going to out question these politicians. Oh, I mean, because no. the reason they're successful is they got to answer for everything. You know, no, I mean, though. They can be just caught dead to rights. But they got an answer. What you're saying, Jace, in a nice way is they are experts at at lying. (laughs) Politicians make me – I feel the same way. I probably shouldn't say this, but I feel the same way around politicians that I do when I'm in the woods and I smell a cotton mouth. Yeah. I feel the same way. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just like, proceed with extreme caution and put distance in between <laughs> me me what's funny and is the mo- smell. And most, you wonder why I've been hiding out for about 40 years. And what's years. funny is most of our audience wouldn't even know what a cotton mouth smell like. Let's take a quick break, and uh, we'll, we'll try to get started in John 4. So, Dad, uh, you made mention earlier in the podcast that, you know, the uh, coronavirus is, and it's amazing. You made the observation has driven people more to the internet than ever before. I mean, That's what it looks like. It, I mean, you don't know that from personal he experience. Assumed it. He assumed it, but he assumed correctly, which yeah, I, I right. thought I thought Dad was doing. I've never good. been on the internet as far as clicked onto it. So you're you're correct. More people are there, and guess what's going to happen? So the more people are there, the more people try to hack in and steal stuff. Mischief. That's what, that's what they do. So you see, the lawless are always among you us. You see commerce. You see people trying to take it. So we've got a company that's helping with that, and they want to provide a virtual private network to be able to protect everything you have digitally online. So they're called Express VPN. That's the name of their company, Express VPN. So if you go to their website, which is expressvpn.com slash fill, you'll get three months of Express VPN for free. So basically to protect everything you have online, your footprint, expressvpn.com slash fill and keep your data safe. Get started. It's been 33 minutes. Y'all are rambling. You're Let's, rambling. You started this let, with your ring talk. The guy sent me those rings. <laughs> I, I I was so shocked. I thought it was a box of rocks. Hey, Jace, here's the news flash. Get off the rings. <laughs> okay, you're happy you got a couple of rings. I'm just Boy, saying the your greatest. Today, the disturber of dirt. Now we got the ring man. There was a point that I forgot to tell. <laughs> Look, when Missy had a magnifying glass, she was looking at that ring. She was like, 15 and 0. Did they win every game? Oh, my goodness. I said, where have you been? <laughs> She needs to pay better attention. How so Al must... introduced John chapter okay. four. All right. Talking to this Dad's woman. ready to get some Bible. All right. Yeah. So so yeah. So we we remember we talked about John three and he had this kind of clandestine meeting with John the uh, I mean with now, Nicodemus. What, what does clandestine mean? I have no idea. Yeah, it's got a lot of syllables, Jay. Um, so it, it's uh, so he had this secret meeting okay. uh, with Nicodemus, and it was at night. And so in that, the reason he did that is because Nicodemus didn't really want to be seen talking to Jesus. He kind of was getting it, but he was like, eh, I'm still got a hope. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, but he, he was did. being a politician. Yeah, but he did. But we know he came around. Yeah, he did. Because he winds up helping and taking Jesus' body off the cross, which was awesome. So now it's really interesting. So he's so Jesus is still kind of not out there yet. 
in John in our study. He's just kind of he he's having these little forays into stuff, you know. And so in John chapter four, uh, it starts out by saying the Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, which makes perfect sense because remember we started in John. John the Baptist is the hot guy. I mean, he's baptizing people, this baptism of repentance. By all, the thousands. By the thousands. So they're all these Pharisees are checking out John the Baptist and he's calling them, you brood of vipers. And I mean, he he's like, you know, calling them out. And then all of a sudden everything changes because Jesus was baptized by John. And then John has this realization because of this whole experience that happened. He's the one. He's the guy. So he starts naturally fading back. And he even tells his disciples in John three, he's like, You don't, you know, because they're you know, they're kind of feel like they're competing with Jesus. He's like, there's no competition. He's the guy. So this is what's going on. And the Pharisees find out about this. Now they're like, well, who is this guy? But this is Jesus guy, you know, because we were worried about John the Baptist. So it's a I, new guy for them. And I think just the backdrop of this story is, is so, uh, it's something that I think the Hollywoods, you know, of our society, they don't realize. Because you look at what they do. They try to, take all social classes and tear down those barriers. That That's like their causes. Now, granted, they go down roads. I don't think they should be going down. But basically, that's what was causing the stir about Jesus because here's a person that they don't associate with, mm-hmm. a Samaritan woman, especially in the daylight, and right. she was a woman, so you got the kind of the gender issue here. And we had severe racism going on. Oh, big severe. Time. And here's Jesus. He is fixing to make a social statement, which is all that did was bring him overall in the big picture right. backlash. Oh, exactly. So just the geography of it. So Jesus has been down Jerusalem, and now he's going to head back up to Galilee, which is where he's from. <clears throat> if you'll notice, every time Jesus – um gets into something he's not quite ready for. He retreats back to where he was from, that region where people knew him. It was really interesting. And I I was studying on the resurrection lesson for for this week for Easter. And I didn't realize that, you know, when, when Jesus was raised from the dead, he went right back to Galilee, which I thought that was, I, I'd never thought about that before. You know, you'd think the our thinking would be, well, up here in Jerusalem, that's where all the people are and that's where they killed you. But he didn't. You know, when he did his appearances for the 40 days after he was raised, Mm-hmm. All in Galilee, which is really interesting. I'd never really noticed that before. But anyway. So what do you think the significance of that? Well, I think it's because he's always – one is there's safety there because that's where the people he knows the best are and his and his mom, his family. But the other thing is – and, of course, the disciples all ran back there. But I really think, Jace, is because Jesus, his whole philosophy and ministry was that he wanted seekers. He was always like he would take a step. He wasn't obvious about what he was talking about. He he would tell parables, and he wanted people seeking him for the right reason. And you notice that's why he always had that step back. Like he was always like, you got to have seekers. And so I, I think that's true even of today. I think people have to want to find Christ to be able to find him. That's why it's just not so obvious there. But we think you just snap your finger and everybody gets converted. Yeah, like the text in Hebrews. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For right. whoever comes to him must believe he exists, and he rewards those that's who right. earnestly, earnestly seek him. I like it. So I, I think that's what's going on here. So just Jesus is on his way back to Galilee. And the problem is the way it worked out is to get to Galilee, the way the geography worked out in, in those days, is you had to go through a region called Samaria. And the problem with Samaria is that it was full of Samaritans and this goes way back and I won't give you all the biblical history, but basically this place become a kind of breeding ground of all kind of different religions and falsehood. The old Testament is full of it. This was part of the split in the kingdom. And so they had, that's where Ahab and Jezebel, they had all these false gods and Baal and worship and all that. So they had just become kind of this muddled group of people. They still had a Jewish connection, but the problem was they didn't go to Jerusalem to worship to the temple. They didn't go there for Passover. They went up on their mountain, you know, mm-hmm. which was in Samaria. So God had all, had had basically cut them off back in 700. Mm-hmm. They've been cut off for 700 years when we get to this story. And I tell you all that just to give you a background that this woman, Jason mentioned it. One is she's a woman, but then two is she's a Samaritan woman. So to a Jew, you if you went and talked to this woman or if you touched something that she had touched, you would be ceremonial ceremonially unclean. You couldn't go to the temple. You would have to go and do a blood sacrifice. I mean, there's a whole big thing. 
Jews didn't mess with Samaritans. So that's the backdrop of the story. So let's take a break and then we'll we'll uh, get in as far as we can get today. So that's the that's the backdrop. Well, eventually you're going to get to those passages that we treasure about. There's no social class. There's no uh, like Galatians three twenty six and twenty seven. There's no male or female. There's no what's the other uh, nationality, yep. uh, Jew or Gentile. I mean that everyone comes together at the foot of the cross and at the empty grave. No matter where you're from, no matter how much money you got, no matter what you look look like. And so the reason I brought up what the world tries to do, and I mean those are outside of Jesus, because they look around and there's a there's a draw to find all people meaningful. Even people outside of Jesus, it, it's, it's strange to me, because I think it's the evidence of God, that people, whether they know Jesus, have read the Bible or not, there's this pull to unite despite our differences. And I think it's unfortunate that people don't realize that, because religion might have screwed it up, that actually that's what Jesus did. Yeah. He he valued yeah. all people. I've seen more coming together as human beings as the pandemic, when it hit, began to spread, people began to die, and people began to fear it, it put fear in them. They're wearing masks and all kinds of stuff, trying to, they're getting ready. And, and you look at the human race, but the more I look, I've heard more uh, talk about biblical matters, prayer, uh, coming together, loving your neighbor yep. <clears throat> in the last month. Serving other people. That I've heard in my life You're while right. on the earth. That's a great point. You, you say, I wonder what the was the motivating factor behind it. <laughs> and I, I ended up with fear. Yeah. But it's you all, know, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I say, well, at least they're beginning to reach out to each other, no matter the circumstances, no matter where you came from. I just see a coming together under the pandemic. And maybe that's why... God is possibly behind it all. I well, don't. certainly that's our reaction to it. He's as done it before. As believers, that's our reaction. But I, I love, to Jesus' point, we had just come from this Pharisee that Jesus is sharing with. <laughs> I mean, he's the ruling council yeah. of, of of the Jews to this woman out yeah, here in the middle. Who's had a what, – what how would we <laughs> well, describe her Well, life? we'll get into her life next time. By the way, just, by the way if know. the Apostle Paul had had the luxury – and and I'm I'm the last person you'd think would ever say something like this because I've never purchased a cell phone, never turned on a computer. <laughs> Is that but right? if the Apostle we're Paul right. had had this particular vehicle, we're sitting down here. Somebody says, "Well, what about it? Y'all can't y'all can't meet in a church building down here now because of the pandemic." Ow! We're sitting here talking. I'm glad everybody else has a cell phone, or they wouldn't be hearing what the three of us are now saying. I think you've I'm been just, converted. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> through the – if he had had this opportunity to speak to, what, a half a million people a week? Well, it's even bigger, I mean, the, the opportunity. Well, but yeah, yeah, but there's yeah. a lot of people watching and listening. And a lot of people – I mean, we appreciate you telling us it's, it's well, impacting your life. And from a non so – Christianity is alive and well. This is right. Easter week when Jesus was resurrected. We're beaming it out this morning, sitting down here in the middle of nowhere. You're like, well, man – it's not that bad a situation to be in as far as the gospel goes. It's well, a great opportunity. What helps our message, it's from a non-religious origin. I mean, you know, there's a difference in being with a group and having a religion and taking up for that name. Or, But we're just trying to represent Jesus and study the Bible, and we may be wrong on some of our assertions, but we're at least trying to get there and we're mm -hmm. discussing it. The, the lack of agenda is what I think makes it appealing. That's why I always bring up things that I see in common with the world. And this is one, because even the the feminist movement, well, if you just look at Jesus' life, take out what they're representing and what they're saying. Look, at, look how many times he took up for women. And this is a classic example. I mean, he's talking to a religious leader, but you'd think he would only stay there. What separates him from most religious leaders is then the next day, He's out here at a well with a woman who, let's just say, has a past. Yeah. I'm sure she was dressed like she had a past. 
She's in denial about it. She's not even someone She's that been they sh- married five times and is currently right. shacked up. <laughs> and here's Jesus taking time out of his life. You know, just think of giving her a one on one. And despite her in every part of the conversation doing what she shouldn't be doing, denial, lie, you know, getting religious, hypocritical at every turn he takes up for, you know, and he's showing the value that he has for ultimately with being his creator and what he would do. I mean, I just think it's awesome. Now see, that's, that's, that's pretty deep thinking, but a lot of people would say if they looked at Jace, if they just looked at him sitting there (laughs) or saw him walking down the road, the last thing that would enter their mind is there is a great theologian. They would say, no, no, get him out of here now. Have you looked at that dude? So I'm just talking about you, Jace. No telling what they say when they see me. Al is, you know, he's got the spiffy little whiskers gone and all that stuff. You know, they say, okay, he may be they going may somewhere. To me. But theologically me. speaking, it, it doesn't match because you don't have the look, Jace. You see what I'm saying? No, I really don't. You know, I don't somehow or another, this guy, I, I don't. Well, you I, might have had the look for this era, you know. <laughs> no, I was just thinking of all the women. No, I look at patterns. You know, you got to John 8, you had the religious people on one side. Well, here you have a woman who's on the wrong side of things. Well, what did he do? He he took up for the woman. But what I'm saying is what we're the, the far left heap abuse on people like me just because they think, oh, here's a religious person, and then they stereotype me. And they got all and these like, names. He doesn't like women. And I'm like, oh, my Lord and Savior, I mean, he he put his life on the line way more than anything I've seen you do. You know, he's out here with the women that you would think, well, okay, he's for women, but not for this woman. I mean, because she's, she's a doozy. I mean, the woman they brought to him – it was caught in the act of adultery. The man is never mentioned. She's there all skin up and beat up. Jesus reached down, picks up, says, well, you know, he said, I'll tell you what, the, the one, which one of you is without sin? You throw the first rock at her. And they're, oh, all, got they're, they're all looking around like, what? Said, the ones of you who have never sinned, you know, he didn't say, by the way, where's the man here? Right. What happens to him because he was immoral with this woman? So the bottom line is he told her, he said, look, Leave your life of sin. Where's your accuser? Well, they all started to drop their rocks and all walked away. We've got some great stories coming up for sure. When we well, I want to tell this last thing. I know we got to go, but I've, and I told this story before, so I'm just going to give you the cliff notes. I say that because my theology came from when I met a, a, a woman who, I don't even know what they call each other now, but a gay woman who was working on our TV show who had an unfavorable view of Jesus. But after I told her to read the book of John, because she fell in love with us just like we loved her, you know, as a human being. Yep. When she read it, that was one of the things she said, because she, she had never read the Bible. But she said, I, I was shocked at how much Jesus took up for women. Hmm. So I That's formed a, a theology there because I needed her perspective. That stood out to her, and it made it, appealing because she had had stereotyped Let me put this it. one point in as you as we leave this <laughs> when jesus was talking to the woman read her mind and he, he he loved her and he wanted to be saved he said he said believe me woman a time is coming are all you people who say no we're going to the church bell and no matter what because that's where we where we go to worship just remember this a time is coming when you will worship the father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know for salvation from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, as all you theologians listening here, and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they're the kind of worshiper the Father seeks, God's spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth you don't have to. The, the day of going to a place, uh, let's that's, go to church, let's go to worship services. You're looking at it wrong. That's what we're talking about next section. There you go. Next session. That well, that's a good people. lead in. There you go. There's your there's your homework before see you next time. See you next week. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.